So coming back to um, the um, topic for today, is it about the electronics, electrical and the battery cooling design? It's also called a thermal management of uh, electrical electronics and the battery um, systems. And before I try to walk you through um, this presentation, one part of that would like to make it that, what exactly is the thermal management and uh, some of the, um, you know, yang and bubbling engineers, so they ask the same question that, what exactly is that thermal management? Why do we call it a management? Uh, rather say that, you know, thermal analysis or maybe the thermal design of that. The reason behind is that this is all about um, uh, managing a multiple or multidisciplinary kind of designs. And henceforth, it was given a name called thermal management system in the industry. And this is an offshoot of, um, a electrical electronic packaging uh, interdisciplinary engineering so we call it a thermal management so i will try to talk more about that as we proceed with uh, this presentation now the very first thing which uh, strikes in my mind that what exactly is about this thermal management of electronics and where in the sense, uh, where are these applied or the practice, best practice, you know, guides or guidelines who would be practice, I mean, put it across to various other uh, places. So which we call it applications. So right now, widely being used for uh, automotive, aviation, defense, entertainment, health industry, lighting, manufacturing, research, space technology, telecommunication, transportation, and the um, list is not really exhaustive and we don't know the way the surprising element comes over about its application. So the, the practices and the engineering, the multidisciplinary thing would be utilized for various domains. So nowadays you call it a domain or engineering, um, day to day, the phrases are being changing. So I would try to term it called application. So which you would uh, quickly get connected to that. And why do we use the thermal management system? Why do we use that? Basically, the influencing factors matter a lot. Now, if you look upon that, the electronic or electrical systems, it has got. Um, integrated circuits, inductors, be it IGBT at the electrical level, silicon control rectifier, and lot many other packages come over onto that. And they're not as robust as even a human, they're very sensitive rather. And based upon its functionality and their adaptability to the environment, which I'll try to mention about that uh, after a while, the, these packages or rather say these components, smaller components need to be explored further and need to be made utilized of their full functionality. So until otherwise we try to explore about the, their response to the external stresses or external environment, it wouldn't be possible for an engineer to really make a system design and try to give it to the customer and the customer needs to be get delighted once he tries to put it across uh, these units whatever you try to design it so the generally the what are the influencing factors as you know that when you try to take a small piece of a radio or other say an electronic gadget meet be it a mobile and it gets soaked into the hot condition or maybe with the solar radiation after a while, it doesn't really function. The problem is that it has got its own limitations to work uh, successfully uh, with all the functionalities and the features So what you asked for that. The other one is it very cold. So if you go to any other cold region, et cetera, obviously you will see that uh, the functionality will deteriorate. Why exactly we'll try to I'll tell that more briefly uh, at a later stage of uh, this presentation. The other movement is that a humid uh, weather. In fact, uh, humid weather is sometimes more detrimental than the temperature conditions too. 
But the problem is that nowadays, most of these polymers of the plastic, they are not really good behaviors for this humid at all. So that's where you will see some problem with that, especially in the coastal regions of any country. And the vibrations, as you know, that um, any unit that gets mounted elsewhere, if that doesn't have a fair environment, but you find it out, you know, it keeps vibrating. It's like a ground excitation. So I sit on a chair and uh, the ground gets excited and I wouldn't be able to uh, do all my works uh, properly because uh, something, you know, this disturbing me that. So these vibrations too, uh, what happens? Uh, they try to give the similar treatment uh, for uh, our units or uh, wherever we try to install it and all the materials uh, which uh, try to respond to the frequency at which you know they try to trigger the resonance what we call it and this is how the vibration is also you know detrimental for that and what about the dust rain corrosive hazards obviously the dust is something that for instance we have uh, filtered um, the fans for our electronic systems and if the fans get clogged with the dust or even the filters how do I pass it on the convection air or rather say the convective mode? It wouldn't be possible. So it will try to deteriorate. So all these things need to be discussed. And that's where the thermal management system would do say that why I require this thermal management system also. Now coming to the next one, when do we apply or rather say that what we call design objectives, what we call it. For that, the functionality and requirements are at most critical here. What do we mean by that requirements? To be very um, precise, I'm a customer. I would like to see that the unit that gets mounted somewhere on the top of a hill or so, and that hill is somewhere in Himachal Pradesh or somewhere on Himalayas. Uh, we know, as you know, that the Himalayas, the higher altitude, and there are some challenges. And in the sun, radiation, no doubt about it. But it may be the cold nature, but not all the times. So the solar radiation also matter. And what if the hilltop is somewhere at the eastern or western gods or somewhere around that? Then you have temperatures and everything working upon. Now, I like to make, using all that techniques, to make this guy functionally, you know, performing to the fullest extent, whatever he asked for that. Now, what about the functionality? Functional could be, for instance, I put a DC-DC converter or maybe the mobile station, uh, be it any medical device. So if I try to give some input signal, input signal in the sense, not necessarily an electromagnetic or, uh, you know, the signal, it could be even in terms of the voltage and the current and the output also needs to be there. So for instance, if I try to step down to 30 volt to five volt DC, but what if, if I don't get a five volt DC at all? So where is that extra thing, you know, gets deteriorated? Obviously it would be in terms of the heat, uh, from the uh, the electrical circuit also. So I'll have a serious problem over there. So that defines about my functionality. So one is that you have the uh, requirement, the other one is the functionality. And once these two, um, you know, not limited to these two alone, but a majority of these two things are met, then yes, my design objectives are met and we can push it further for the uh, tests, etc. But how do I ad achieve these objectives uh, whatever the requirements are put forth by my customer and also the functionality which he had specified across. Yeah, when we have uh, various design methodologies. So I would, uh, I mean, always a focus first thing, enhance on the system design. What exactly, why do we need to take care of the system design? What exactly the system design? Then thermal fluid sciences, obviously, that's the one which will trigger this thermal management system. We have modes of heat transfer, and within the modes of heat transfer, we have various techniques we need to address that. And the other one is that design failure mode and effect analysis or effective analysis, what exactly deal with that? Unless I try to make a list of 
what are the things that go wrong during my design as well as its functionality or in the field when i don't have that perception to oversee these failures it wouldn't be possible for an engineer to come back uh, to chuck out uh, saying that what exactly the mistake which i had done at the design level so dfme is the driving force for realizing about its successful functionalities that's the reason they're well connected with the functionality in the sense uh, one is a requirement of code so they they would try to say that but the other one is that the functionality so that's the reason design failure mode based upon the functionality as well as put together the requirement i'll be able to realize that what are the shortcomings in my design so it's not necessarily that you try to figure it out only in the field test that would be detrimental you'll have to come back or rather say you learn to do and figure it out at the right from your design table itself and food see what are the design failures and design failures is not like that you sit across alone and try to figure it out that would be more dangerous what i would suggest is always you have to discuss with the cross functionality team members or rather say that bring back the manufacturing guy servicing guy then your design you know stakeholders and and of course you were somebody who is a reviewer i mean who can see the functionality of it all these guys need to really figure it out what exactly the failures then as a design driver or design uh, guy you will have to drive the rest of the uh, design failure modes and see that uh, how do i try to address these to mitigate that one so that's the responsibility the chief responsibility of the design then what if uh, the dfx X is X stands for excellence. In fact, in the sense that would be various. You know, each uh, industry they define their own excellence. For instance, design for reliability, design for car, design for serviceability, design for assembly, design for manufacturability. Various excellence things need to be addressed before we try to make our design. So, what if if everything goes well, but it is not done for design for testing? um i mean to say that measurement or testing okay uh, interchangeable in some of the uh, places so i made that but i don't know how to really check about its quality so that's difficult then so i need to also address that issue so otherwise before i don't really test it or measure it and it wouldn't be possible for me to really foresee certain failures which will try to trigger during the field test now that's the reason after i try to or you realize about the dfx or excellence of that design for excellent then verification and validation i think most of the engineers nowadays we use it or rather say everyone uses um the finite element approach a uh, see uh, computation for dynamic and now which technologies we will try to address is that and i said that okay i'm going to cool everything but what type of a technology i mean what type of a technology would i use that you know in making it is it like uh, you know throwing or rather say spraying water on that no way that's not the right solution for many of these approaches then how do i use that what components what advancements we have within this technology that's called cooling technologies we could call it then what for me opportunities to me to be very precise obviously this matters a lot after hard work after a long stretched hours or so uh, what exactly is left out for me that so um, it matters in the industry where you work and uh, how do you really put it across the professional growth i would have seen many of the electronic packaging guys or a thermal management guys or thermal guys they wouldn't switch over after a while i never seen a guy switching to any other domain after a while in a sense in one or two years there are several guys who would switch over because uh, patient's level or um, you know realizing or putting heart may be uh, i mean a great issue but after a while a couple of years or so i never seen so far if they had done that uh, 
no doubt that they would come back to that because that's a beauty of this thermal management of electrical and electronic system. We'll go to the next one and to have more idea about what exactly is thermal management system and why do we try to project it more and is it a serious a technology or uh, it's one of its sciences and there are several doubts and speculations which people have it well i would uh, put it across like this humbly that it's an interdisciplinary system designed to cool the electronics electrical and battery systems to the desired range for durable and reliable performance this is what all about the um, multidisciplinary system design level thermal management system or the cooling design of the electrical electronics and battery system. So all the phrases you put it across in, in whichever the way you want to do that, I think finally you'll have to address in cooling these systems. So that is the main purpose of the thermal management system or the cooling design of the electrical and electronic system. And you would see that um, when we talk about uh, many of these uh, technologies, which I have it in the other slide also, but maybe as you open the laptop and don't try to do that, you'll be spoiling it if you are not aware of that. But when you see, when you check your laptop, because I say laptop because most of you guys will be working from home either or have an access to the laptop, obviously you'll see that. Or any other electronic circuit, obviously you'll see that some of these fancy guys, the extended fin, you know, the material that's called heat sinks, we call it. And on the right hand side, we'll see that there would be some paste applied before you try to tie it. We'll uh, discuss more as we proceed. If you're really interested about thermal interface material, we call it. So any interstitial gap between these two guys will have um, a heat transfer issue or it will create thermal resistance. So we will try to address that uh, with the thermal interface material. The next one is the air filters also. So I cannot put down all the dust onto the electronic system. We will have um, air filters that will try to knock off uh, the high particulate and it will switch over or rather say it will pass on um, the a better or you know, called less polluting air to your electronic system. And fans, blowers, um, they work upon the same terminology called air movers. So obviously in the forced convection, we'll be using these ones. And when you open any laptop, for instance, in any old, I would recommend doing that for the reason because you will see this guy. Um, it's a centrifugal blower, a very thin blower of uh, sometimes maybe eight millimeter, five to eight millimeter. Some of the thick one would go for about uh, nine to 10 you know, millimeter or so. And this guy is the one who will cool the heavy processor, what we have it in the laptop. If you are able to see this zoom and the slides, thank God that you know there is some cooling system there. Otherwise, they cannot take the heavy load of the data. So that's how these cooling systems are very critical for that. And on the right hand side, the last one, what you have this one is about the liquid cool. The liquid cool is again, you know, we pass it on on today in aluminum or the copper tube, normally aluminum 6063 is what we try to use it. And this liquid coolant, um, it's called a forced convection again, but here we try to use uh, ethylene glycol water or propylene or maybe the water, but generally water alone, we don't use that. So this guy will try to enhance the heat transfer rate and that's the reason the heat transfer coefficient compared to that of the natural convection or the forced convection, this will be going to the exponentially and that's where it will enhance the heat transfer. And what are the applications now I have it here? Um, these are uh, self-explanatory. Um, the left hand side, you have automotive system. One would ask that what do we have in the automotive other than uh, some of the uh, Zazi stuff like inside on the uh, dashboard or maybe your engine cooling, etc. 
but interestingly, nowadays the engine cooling, the brain behind that is all the electronic system. And to cool that electronic system, again, uh, the mechanical guys or the, you know, the aspirants or the experts uh, like you guys, you need to jump in and try to address these ones. Today, the automotive electronics has gone to a larger extent, the sophistication of that, because everybody would like to see what's happening to my automotive about the health condition of it or whatever it could be. So you have too many sensors around that. And to control that guy, you will have to do that. And the other one is that fuel economy. In tropical areas in some of the developing countries still fuel economy is a challenge for that so for that you should have that engine control based upon your load you need to adjust that that will be done you are all the analogies you put it across in the electronic system on the right hand side if somebody is from the avionic industry or aviation industry um, they will have uh, too many challenges or so any small failure in that the aviation what you are seeing it right now is a cockpit, but there are several other electronics beyond the cockpit. Uh, in the cockpit, you will say cockpit wise uh, recorder or the uh, data wise recorder and or what do you call that flight data recorder. And apart from that, there are other avionic systems and all these would try to enhance. So for instance, even if you want to raise the flight or other state, the airplane, you should have the controls and these controls are uh, obviously triggered by all these electronic systems. So to keep that guys in cool, you will have the challenges over there. And that's when you need to jump into that. On the right hand side or what you are working right now, seeing either your PC or the laptop, uh, typical thing, all the right from the IT, all the, all the end users, uh, this is done by that. So in the previous, um, slide also there is one application which i was talking about that so the the right hand side what you see after the laptop is again a typical electronic system um, there are several uh, power segments uh, space segments uh, they, they use a uh, multiple of these uh, so you'll have to cool these guys and the medical and the space research space research comes over here um in the space research predominantly heat pipes and other components are being used or if you have the electronic system or the smaller components where you have to take care of about its functionality and see that where exactly it is being utilized and the telecommunication the right extreme you will have um, the higher challenges coming from the competition side. The competition, basically, if you are getting two MBPS of the speed to unlimited nowadays, it's all on account of the wonderful electronic guys, telecommunication guys who are doing it. And you will have to support uh, being a thermal management system guy or the mechanical guy. Uh, in the space research, what happens? Nowadays, the communication, it has I don't say it has reached the peak of the brim, but still it's going on and it's never ending story for that. And there are challenges that we cannot have the fans flowing around because of the limitation in the air or the volume around that. So for that, there are several techniques you need to really, you know, you know put it across over there. So these are the applications and the based upon the functionality and the requirement the applications would go um, into know the umpteen and the spectrum is too much in fact for that so the world is so uh, big that you know you will be learning a lot many other applications as well as if you're in a particular industry uh, let me say that you're from aviation or maybe in your manufacturing industry so in the manufacturing industry special purpose machine uh, it has got a lot of uh, uh, what you call electronics and other control systems that do you would do that um and the safety is concerned i would rate it that the healthcare industry aviation and automotive of course the health you know the uh, the safety is at most really important for that and anything goes wrong, this is normal, it happens in the industry that anything goes wrong and even the functionality doesn't really reach the peak. They would always find 
this mechanical guy or maybe the Tamil guy is saying that, hey guy, uh, my electronic system is not working on account of, you know, your bad cooling. So it's like an opportunity for you guys to really look up on that. If you made it a very decent design, very good. And the rest of the guys would realize that you had done, you have completed your homework and it's all left to the electronics guys. How would they going to fix it up on? So there would be a lot of uh, field testing do that before you try to arrive at it, uh, how these guys behave at various conditions at various functionalities.